Yeah. Now, speaking of Royal this week, our, our talk is all about Hampton Court, which was Henry VIII's most famous residence devoted to pleasure, celebration, and ostentatious display of art. Hello, Sarah. Welcome. Hi. Morning, everyone. Thank you. Yes. So Hampton Court was Henry VIII's uh, most famous re residence, the original Tudor Hampton Court Palace actually began construction by Cardinal Wolsey in the early 16th century, but it soon attracted the attention of Henry VIII, who eventually brought his six wives there, his famous six wives, uh, surrounded by gorgeous gardens and famous features such as the maze and the great vine. The palace has been the setting for many historical events. By the 1530s, Henry VIII's Hampton Court was a palace, a hotel, a theater, and a leisure complex. The king used it to demonstrate magnificence and power in every possible way through lavish banquets, extravagant court life, and fabulously expensive art. When William III and Mary II took the throne in 1689 as joint monarchs, they commissioned Sir Christopher Wren to build an elegant new Baroque addition to the palace. Queen Victoria then opened the palace to the public in 1838, and it has remained a destination for millions of visitors drawn to the grandeur and history. So in the pictures above taken by Liz, you can see the Thames River, which borders the driveways and entrance to Hampton Court. Once you step into the court itself, you're welcomed by the palace's world famous gardens, which include 60 acres of spectacular formal gardens and 750 acres of parkland, all set within um, a loop of the River Thames. The gardens are home to the world's oldest puzzle maze, a record breaking grapevine, three national plant collections, and a huge variety of wildlife, including the descendants of Henry VIII's deer herd. Monarchs and their gardens have all influenced, uh, and their gardeners have all influenced the gardens in different ways. Uh, in the early 1500s, Cardinal Wolsey laid out the first small gardens before Henry VIII took over the palace and added his heraldic privy gardens. Uh, Hampton Court gardens have always been at the cutting edge of design, and in the next few slides, we'll go into detail in some of the famous parts of the gardens. So the privy, meaning private garden, was created to allow a quiet space for the monarch's exclusive use. Henry VIII designed um, his as a heraldic garden. Later art collector, Charles I, created a simple Italianate style garden in which to display his classical structure, uh, statues. And the privy garden today is actually a reconstruction that was done in 1995 of William III's 1701 formal privy garden. And it's the perfect place to relax as we can see AJ doing so in the middle picture. Located deep into the gardens is a glass house containing the world famous grape vine, thought to be the oldest and the largest in the world. This is a black Hamburg variety planted in 1768 by Lancelot Capability Brown, who was the main gardener at the time. Until 1920, uh, the grapes grown here were exclusively for the royal table. Now the delicious ripe grapes are harvested daily in September and sold to visitors. And the rootstock of the grapevine is actually from a cutting taken from the Valentine's Mansion Gardens in Essex, which is a, another mansion in Essex. Uh, so in 1887, it was already four feet around the base and it's now 13 feet around the base and the longest branch is 120 feet. That's a really long branch. Uh, the average crop of black dessert grapes is about 600 pounds uh, per year. But in autumn of 2001, it was 845 pounds, the largest crop to date. Uh, and the grapes are ripe after August bank holiday, which is at the end of August. And they're sold during the first three weeks of September in the palace shop to visitors. The famous maze is situated to the north of the palace in the wilderness area of the gardens. Its precise origins are um, as lost as the people in it but it's mo most likely to have been made for William III in the last years of his reign and completed by Queen Anne's gardener, Henry Wise. The maze is featured in a popular Victorian novel by Jerome K. Jerome called Three Men in a Boat. The author describes a visit by his hero, Harris, to the maze, where Harris underestimates the difficulty of solving the puzzle. He and his two friends get hopelessly lost and they have to be rescued. 
Uh, when the gardens were opened to the public in 1838, the maze became one of the most popular parts of the grounds at the palace as it remains today. Hampton Court Park is a royal park that occupies 750 acres of ancient parkland and is as stunning as it is diverse. Uh, it's accessible from the outside of the main palace and supports a mosaic of grassland, woodland, and wetland habitats. The park is proudly designated a site of specific scientific interest in SSSI. And here you can observe the deer herds, which as I mentioned, uh, which you can see on the, on the picture of the bottom left that was taken by Liz, which were the descendants of Henry VIII's hunting deer herd. And you can also admire the veteran trees, rare plants, and endangered invertebrates. In addition, you can also find the Longwater Canal, uh, known today as the Longwater, which is a beautiful stretch of water completed in 1660 by King Charles II. In a spectacular show of affection, the king dedicated this water feature, complete with its double row of lime trees on either side, as a wedding present to his bride-to-be, Catherine of Braganza. So now let's explore the inside of the palace, starting with the kitchen. Henry VIII's kitchens at Hampton Court Palace were the largest in of Tudor England. 200 cooks, grooms, and pages worked to produce over 800 meals a day for the hungry household of Henry VIII. And feeding the court was a complex business, all done without modern conveniences. Around 1.3 million logs burned in the kitchen hearths every year. There's also a surviving chocolate kitchen. As part of the later Baroque building, the chocolate kitchens at Hampton Court Palace were built for William and Mary around 1689, but mainly served the Georgian kings. Uh, George I even had his own personal chocolate maker, Thomas Tossier. And the chocolate kitchen had been mentioned in many documents, but its location in the palace remained a mystery actually. And until in 2013, one of the palace curators discovered an 18th century inventory of the palace that pinpointed the location of the chocolate kitchen. So they were reopened in 2014 and are the only royal chocolate kitchens in Britain. In Britain. Mm -hmm. The state apartments are a highlight of any visit to Hampton Court. In this picture, you can see William III's state apartments, which are led up to by a grand staircase. On the wall is the um, victory of Alexander over the Caesars by Italian artist Antonio Verrio. And the 12 Caesars represent the Catholic forces that William ousted in the Glorious Revolution. Other highlights in his apartment are the, grand, uh, the guard chamber that displays a remarkable collections of weapons on the walls. Uh, guards would have been stationed at the door checking if courtiers were suitably dressed and behaved before allowing them into the presence chamber. And the presence chamber is the official throne room with the chair of a state under its formal canopy. And visitors still had to bow to the throne as they passed, even if it was empty. Another magnificent place to visit is the Great Hall, located in the heart of the Tudor's palace. The Great Hall was designed to impress and to proclaim Henry VIII's power and magnificent. And even today, the size and grandeur of the Great Hall will take your breath away. As you look up at the roof, you can see the great skill of the craftsmen who made it. Uh, Henry VIII chose the nostalgic hammer beam style to evoke the great halls of his medieval predecessors. Uh, Henry was attracted by tales of their chivalric deeds and modeled himself and his palace on them. And on the walls of the great hall hang a series of tapestries showing scenes from the life of the patriarch Abraham from the book of Genesis. And these tapestries were probably commissioned by Henry VIII and were first hung in the Great Hall around 1546. And on special occasions, the Great Hall was used for plays, dances, and masks. Uh, James I's court spent Christmas and New Year's of 1603 at Hampton Court to escape an outbreak of the plague in London. And during uh, the festive celebrations, William Shakespeare and his company of players performed a Midsummer Night's Dream in the Great Hall. By the early 1700s, the Great Hall had stopped being used for dining, and instead, uh, a permanent theater was built into the space. It included a stage with a proscenium arch and tiers of seating for audiences. And last but not least, since this is an art talk, uh, we can't forget the Cumberland Art Gallery. 
The Cumberland Art Gallery houses a changing display of artworks principally from the Royal Collection, reflecting Hampton Court's palace's long history as a place to see great art. Uh, the palace was a royal residence from the early 1500s until the 1730s. And this era saw great royal collectors and connoisseurs like King Charles I and Frederick, Prince of Wales, and they assembled one of the largest and finest art collections of its kind in the world. For example, you can see in the picture on the right, a famous painting of Julius Caesar. And the royal family filled the state apartments and the palace with artworks for their private enjoyment and as magnificent statements of regal authority. That brings us to the end of our art talk. I hope you consider or get the chance to see Hampton Court Palace and I will see you for the next art talk. Thank you. Great. Hey, thank you so much, Sarah. As you discovered, I was just recently there at Hampton Court and it really is quite a walk through history. In fact, you know, those uh, state apartments that Sarah uh, showed us were actually used by perhaps the, the lesser well-off members of the royal family, I think up and through the 80s and um, until they just kind of eventually get, got into disrepair. So they stopped using it as housing for, for the less well-off members of the royal family. I found that a little bit of fact kind of interesting. So, and, you know, it's great that many of us are now finally getting out to travel a bit, travel this summer. We've been actually traveling quite a bit for business this summer. And I have to say, this is one of the wor worst summers for traveling. Oh, I mean, sure. so many flights uh, just kind of got somehow messed up because of just uh, weather or other reasons. And they're all full. Delayed yeah. or canceled as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's great that we're now finally getting to travel. Now, if any of you would like to share your experiences um, on our town halls as you travel, Please, uh, please kindly email Nicole, and uh, it'd be great to see if we can highlight some of your uh, travel experiences. So, and it's actually fun that we can all kind of be a little bit of an armchair traveler as we hear, listen to Sarah talk about Hampton Court and some of our other town halls in the past as well.